he came in in third, and he led 65 laps. Um, the highest, okay, uh, was Kurt Busch, who led 65 laps. Kevin Harvick, 34 laps. And then Denny Hamlin, he actually led 56 laps. Uh, Denny Hamlin, the 11 car, he finished 28th on Sunday. So Sunday was the Auto Club uh, 400, uh, the 26th running of the Auto Club 400. Uh, and the Auto Club Speedway has the oldest asphalt in the 2015 series, uh, uh, paved in 1997, okay, and is the widest track at 75 feet wide. So the number of laps scheduled was 200, the actual lap count was 209, and uh, because of, you yeah, had two green-white checkered uh, attempts, race start time was 3.52 p.m. Eastern, race finish time 6.50 p.m. Eastern, and track temps at, well, temp temperatures at the race start, air temperature was 69 degrees, track temp 104. The presentation of colors presented by the California National Guard Color Guard. Invocation by Bill Molden, okay, in, from the MRO. National Anthem performed by American Idol contestants. And Gentlemen Start Your Engines Command also uh, was performed by the American Idol contestants along with Scott Prochetta from Victory Lane Head. Flyby for T6 Warbirds from the Plains of Flame Air Museum in Chino, California. And they flew from turn four to turn one. Now, one big news from Sunday was Brian Vickers, the 55 car, did not race on Sunday uh, due to uh, some health issues. Uh, he, he's been fighting blood clots and he had him on uh, blood thinning medica medications for the next three months. Uh, Brett Muffet filled in for him in the 55 car. So uh, that's the reason for that. So safety precautions since he's on medications can't be behind the wheel. Um, now, Jeff Gordon had some issues with his safety harness as the cars were rolling out of pit rope for the pace lap. Now, uh, Je Jeff Gordon, of course, the 24 car. Last time Jeff Gordon won at the Fontana was 1997. All right. Uh, oh, and pace the pace car was actually driven by Modern Family star Eric Stone Street. So there you go. All right. So, your top five, as of lap four during this race, it was Kyle, Kurt Busch, Kevin Harvick, uh, Reagan, David Reagan, Matt Kenseth, Denny Hamlin. Okay, but Kevin Harvick would take the lead in lap six, but we'll go over the, the lead segment, the lead summary in a moment. And there was uh, seven top two finishes, the most since 1975 for Kevin Harvick. Okay, last win for Kevin Harvick at Fontana was his only win, and that was at Fontana in 2013. Now the top five, as at lap 15, you had Harvick, Kurt Busch, Denny Hamlin, Kenseth, and Brad Keselowski. 40 cars on the lead lap at lap 20, and then the yellow flag didn't start flying until lap. 22. David Reagan, he loses it after making contact with Jeff Gordon at turn 4. David Reagan in the 18 car, which has been filling in for Kyle Busch, and Jeff Gordon, we all know the 24 car. Beneficiary there is J.J. Yaley in the 23 car. And the race restarts at lap 28. Now you had top 3 at the restart, Kenseth, Hamlin, and Harvick. Top four, lap 37, was Hamlin, Kenseth, Harvick, Kurt Busch, and, uh, which actually they each had less than two, they're actually less than two seconds apart from each other. And then the top 10 of lap 43 was Harvick, Kenseth, Busch, Logano, Keslowski, Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, Truex Jr., and Ryan Newman. All right, so, and Hamlin had a uh, 2.8 second lead over Kevin Harvick. He had three big guys that dominated this race on Sunday. It was Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin, until he went in for the pit and he broke his axle later on in the race. Then Kurt Busch had it and, uh, you know, the guys on Fox, they're saying, uh, you know, because th the big buzz was that if Kevin Harvick was to win, he would have swept the uh, 
West Coast Swing, winning three in a row. Uh, but then the guys on Fox said, no, Kurt Busch was going to win it. And it looked like Kurt Busch was going to win it. But that second green-white checkered, I think, uh, favored uh, Brad Keselowski, which I think surprised a lot of people on Sunday. So your second question comes out. At lap 86, this one was for debris between turns 3 and 4. Beneficiary Austin Dillon in the number 3 car. And then the green flag comes out, lap 92. Lap re- the race restarts at lap 93. Your th- now your third question come out, lap 98. Sam Harris Jr. in the number 9 car. He goes into the wall after making contact with Trevor Bain in the 6 car. Beneficiary Casey Mears in the 13 car. Hornish Jr. heads to the garage. Um, I don't know if he dropped out of the race or not, because I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. Um, so I'll be honest with you about that. Well, anyway, the uh, race halfway mark was at lap 100. Again, 200 was scheduled, and they had to push it to 209. Um, so, now, so Truex... Okay, so Truex Jr. I had some notes on Truex Jr., but I uh, forget what I wrote. Okay, all right. <laughs> so uh, the green flag comes out lap 104, restart lap 105, okay? And Chris Boucher makes his Sprint Cup debut in the 34 car on Sunday. And then you had a top 10 at lap 112, which was Kurt Busch, Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano, Matt Kenseth, Jimmy Johnson, Earnhardt Jr., Truex Jr., Paul Menard, uh, Tony Stewart, and Brad Keselowski. Kurt Busch led 20 laps already um, by the time lap 115 rolled around. Denny Hamlin already had his 56 under the belt. Harvick at this moment had 19. And Truex Jr. has four top eights in the first four races of 20. 15. Now you had 30 cars in the lead lap at lap 117. Kurt Busch led his 30th lap as of 122. Also, with he also had a two-second lead over Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick was in second place at the time and had a five-point second lead over Joey Logano, which uh, fell back a little bit as the race went on. And then uh, Earnhardt Jr. moves into the top five for the first time in the entire race at lap 135, okay? Then your top ten at lap 148 was Kevin Harvick, Kurt Busch, Matt Kenseth, Joe Logano, Jimmy Johnson, Earnhardt Jr., Keselowski, Hamlin, Paul Menard, and Truex Jr. So you, the fourth question would come out lap 153. Again, not a lot of big crashes this, this week. Last week, too, mostly for debris and little stuff, but nothing super major, okay? But, you know, for safety precaution, they see some debris out there, they got to throw the question out there for safety purposes, okay? So the fourth question comes out, lap 153, and this time there's debris on the front straightaway. Casey Mirrors, for the second time, becomes the beneficiary. Joey Logano, get, his crew gets popped for uh, uncontrolled tire, lap 155. Green Filet comes out, lap 157. Restart, lap 158. And then uh, Denny Hamlin led a race high of 56 laps at 157 at the time. Kurt Busch had 48 laps under his belt. Harvick with 30, Kenza 14, and Truex Jr. already had five. So now your fifth question. See, there was not a lot of questions at all this week. Your fifth question come out lap 185. This one was for debris once again. Turn number one. This time, Austin Dillon becomes the beneficiary in the number three car. And this is when it went down for Denny Hamlin. Harvick takes the lead during question five as Kenseth pits. Kenseth, oh, yes, Kenseth. And then uh, Kenseth went end up, he suffers a broken axle and then coming out of the pit box. Uh, that was lap 186. I, I mixed that up. I thought it was Hamlin that got it, but it was actually Kenseth. Um, and then, so he, he was trying to kind of went out of the uh, pit box there and the front axle, front right axle snapped. So they had to take care of that. Um, Denny Hamlin, though, got popped with an uncontrolled tire. He had to restart at the back of the pack there. Um, and his crew chief goes to argue the call to no avail. And that was lap 187. So the green flag comes out lap 188, and the restart lap 189. And Kevin Harvick has already led over 500 laps so far this season. All right. So then your sixth flag comes out lap 198 again for debris. 
uh, turns three and four. Kansas, the beneficiary. Uh, near miss for Jimmy Johnson and Stenhouse Jr. Uh, coming out of the pit box. Carl Edwards gets popped for going too fast on the pit road, lap 200. Remember, you got the line marking the beginning of pit road, and the car has to be at 55 before you cross over and during pit road. And importantly, also, is that you got to maintain that 55 before crossing the other line to get into it. So when you cross the other side, the end of pit road, you got to maintain that 55 till that car completely passes over that line. Some tracks have a little square, all right? Uh, so as soon as you cross, you got to keep it at 55 coming out of the pit box until you cross that line. Very important. So now this would bring the first attempt of uh, green white checkered, which was at this time you're already at lap 201. Now you had Gordon Stewart and Biffle in the top three, okay? Green white checkered, but then they would come out with question number seven again for debris. This was uh, lap 202, so they really didn't get too far. Trevor, obviously, because it's green white checkered, Trevor Bain and uh, Greg Biffle's car. Oh, Greg Biffle's car started slowing down, and he got freight trained. He contacts uh, Kyle Larson's car, which is the 42 car. Then, long, then Kyle Larson contacts the wall. His back public just came right off. That was, and that what really brought out the. Uh, it wasn't a big crash. He kind of just scrub, he turned, scrubbed the wall. The bumper came off, and that and they brought the the flag out for that. Um, but something happened with Greg Biffle's car. Well, he just started losing speed, and it, so how it didn't cause a big car pile up was really a miracle in itself. If you saw that on Sunday, so your seventh question, okay, so that would end with your second attempt for a green-white checkered at lap 206. So they come around 207 for the uh, green flag, 208 for the final lap, and then 209 okay, wraps the race up. And Brad Keselowski came in for the win. And the crazy thing about this win on Sunday, okay, the See the thing about this race on Sunday, and here it is. You had Kurt Busch that led 65 laps, and everyone thought Kurt Busch was going to be the winner on Sunday. Kevin Harvick with 34, Denny Hamlin with 56 laps. Brad Keselowski led one, one lap on Sunday, came in out of nowhere and took that and took the checkered flag. So the lead track summary. Okay, we'll do that real quick. And then we'll go over the events for this upcoming weekend. So Kevin Harvick, he was in front at the race start. Uh, Kurt Busch then took, takes the lead, still in lap one, and then going into lap two. But then Kevin Harvick would take the lead in lap six. He had uh, uh, two, yeah, two lead changes in the first question. Alex Bowen and then Matt Kenseth. He takes the lead at lap 25. Now they're still in that question, and he would take it into the restart lap 28. But then Denny Hamlin would take the lead at lap 33. Gordon lap 61. Hamlin lap 62, and that would bring it into then the second question, where Denny Hamlin holds on until um, Matt Kenseth takes over at lap 89, and he would take it into the restart at lap 93. Then Kurt Busch takes the lead lap 96. Then your third question was Kurt Busch, and then. Truex Jr. takes the lead at lap 98 into that restart, which was lap 105. But he would not hold on to it for too long. He had it only for like a little tiny bit because Kurt Busch just took it right back, which was also lap 105. And then you had Paul Menard, lap 138, okay? Um, that was because Kurt Busch goes to pit. Then Carl Edwards takes it, lap 138. And then Kurt Busch takes it back, lap 139. But then lap 145. Four, Kevin Harvick would take the lead. And then you had your fourth caution. Now your fourth caution, Matt Kansas takes over at lap 154. Into the restart, lap 158. He would hold on to it until he got into question number five, where Matt Harvick takes the lead, which was actually at lap 186 during the fifth caution. And I, I do apologize because at the beginning of the podcast, I said Denny Hamlin was the one who got the broken axle. That was my mistake. It was Matt Kansas. Okay, and Matt Kenseth had the lead for a little bit, and then he goes to pit, has a broken axle issue coming as he was 
coming out of the pit box. And then Harvick maintains that lead.